This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? Well, today we're starting on a job that's usually done when plants are dormant, but this is the only time that we can prune rhododendrons and azaleas because as soon as they're done blooming, they're starting to put buds on for next year. We don't want to lose the buds because those mean flowers. So this is people space. We need to cut this back a little bit, but whenever we prune, we take our time, we take a cut, we step back, we take a look at it. We don't just hack away until we look at it and go, oh, there's nothing left. So let's see where our first cut's gonna be. All right, well, I think I only need to take out this one branch, but we'll take it out, step back and take a look. And we're cutting about a quarter inch from the main trunk and let's see how it looks. All right, got that out of there. I think this needs to go. And I think some of this needs to go. So let's start here. And we'll trace this all the way back into the bush. I'm gonna finish here. I've got something else cool to show you. Well, last week we talked all about containers, about putting a thriller, a filler, and a spiller in, like this Creeping Jenny, but we're also talking about perennials in containers, and that's what this plant is. Came back, it's gonna work its way over the edges here. I didn't know what to put in the center, and I used a resource that you should use too. I went to the garden center, in my case it's Han Nursery, and I asked my friend Diana there, what should I put in for this color, for this lighting condition, which is part shade, part sun, and she picked agapanthus, and I agree. This is gonna be my thriller. This is a perennial in California. Look at those roots. But here we're gonna treat it as an annual, and all we're gonna do is kinda of put it down in here. Oh, that's perfect. And it's gonna have these majestic purple blooms in just a couple days. I'm gonna put some water on this, then I gotta decide what I was gonna put in here as a filler, that won't be today. And we're gonna continue our container theme with tomatoes and the only way that I would plant tomatoes in containers. Well, Jasmine behind the camera is wearing earth shoes. This is called an earth box. And it's a self-watering container and it's the only way, as I said, that I would plant tomatoes in a container. And the reason being, when you put a tomato in a container, if it doesn't get the water that it needs, it's going to get something called blossom end rot, and there's nothing more frustrating than taking care of a tomato for two months and then seeing that black on the bottom of a tomato. So this self-watering container, how it works, above this shelf is where the dirt goes, and how we get water into that reservoir is through a tube that comes out here. And as long as the water is in the reservoir, that means the tomatoes can't dry out, and then they don't get blossom end rot. And these things will grow two full-size tomatoes, believe it or not, now there's lots of different brands out there and you could even make your own if you wanted to. Lots of instructions on the internet. But I'm gonna put two nice sized plants in this one. This is one I've used for a couple years. And that's next. And I think there's a couple holes, yeah, right here. This is the first hole right here. Well, first is an heirloom called black cherry. We're just gonna tuck it in there. Oh, it already has tomatoes on it. That's not cheating. That's part of the game. And we'll put one on the other side we'll be good to go. And this one's called Red Deuce. And look, it has tomatoes too. Not cheating. This is the tube to fill it up with water. And believe it or not, this is a great way to grow tomatoes. If you don't have a garden, if you want some extra plants in there. Now let's head back out into the vegetable garden. And I've got a couple things that we need to do some succession planting on. You guys look good. This is called biting off more than you can chew. Early in the season, I've started some mustard in this container. It's doing what's called bolting. It's going to seed. It's no good. The chickens will enjoy it. It's part of gardening. And here in the field, we have some tatsoi, which is a cool weather crop. And since we had that heat spell, it's bolting and going to seed. And when something does bolt, the leaves become bitter. In this case, I think we're early enough that we can still use it. This is all coming out. Then we're gonna plant something in place of it. And this will be for salad tonight.
And once something comes out, I like to put something right back in. This is a grain called radicchio. And we're just gonna put it in place where the tatsoi was. And it's gonna enjoy the same space because there's some good compost in here. And it's not quite as affected by the heat as the tatsoi was. All right, radicchio is in. Now we had a failure in the garden, that's my fault, but lots of success too. Let's take a look. Check out these nice heads of Simpson Elite lettuce and the celery. Garlic rules. All I'm saying is give beets a chance. You know, we do have to take our successes and our failures in the garden in stride. Just because the deer have destroyed my beloved summer blooming lilies over here, uh, doesn't mean I can't enjoy these foxglove here that they won't touch. I love this plant. They're biennial, meaning the first year it's just foliage, second year all these flowers, and then each one will be filled with seeds. They'll throw them everywhere and come up wherever they want to come up, which is just great. Again, love them. Now I have two more plants to show you. Well, here's another one of my favorites, and the deer don't prefer it. It's our state flower, mountain laurel. Very easy to grow, beautiful white blossoms. But let me show you one that I love that I've been growing for a long time and waited to see some really spectacular colors. Well, the deer aren't supposed to eat mountain laurel. They can't get to one that big, but I've waited four years to see this cultivar bloom because the deer have nibbled on it over the past years. It's poisonous to them. They don't know any better. They're nibbling on it. But look at these blooms. There's lots of different cultivars out there, and I love this one, but I cannot remember for the life of me what it's called. I have to look at my records. Now let's finish up. Did you know you can be part of my exclusive garden club called Everybody Gardens? You can find out online how to subscribe. That's also a place with lots of stories, vlogs, other videos, and a story about Powder Mill Nature Reserve, one of my favorite places. Until next week, I've got lots of azaleas and rhododendrons to prune. We'll see you then. I think it is going to be perfect if I can get it out of the pot. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that. <laughs> man, oh man. So I think it will be the perfect plant for right here as my thriller, as I said, if I can actually get it out of the pot. <laughs> okay. Just be a minute, folks. <laughs> this gives a, a new meaning to the word root bound. <laughs> oh, jeez. I give up.